Now, there are some musicians who I know that are fantastic players and they write great songs, great lyrics, great feel, but they can't necessarily tell you what chords they're playing. Now, while that might not be a huge issue, it could be if you've got extra session musicians, for example, who are coming in and they need to know what to do, um, you know, let alone doing things without written parts, for example. Now, if you're on one of the main sort of music programs, like, I don't know, Pro Tools or Logic, Cubase, Ableton, any of those, the better versions will be able to tell you what chord you're playing when you play on a MIDI keyboard. So if you put three notes, it'll say that's an F major chord. I've made an analog version. Now, this is useful for those who play piano or maybe don't have that music production software who want to be able to write chord charts or lead sheets or whatever it is and to communicate with other musicians because that communication is all important. So a keyboard player that might be going I say, what chords are those? And they go, oh, uh, oh um, uh, is that F? Uh, um, that's like a F over D. So they might get stuck on that, and that's what this wheel is for. Taking that first chord, F, we have an A, a C, and an F. Now, if you know what notes you're playing, which is easier to fathom because you can label them up on the piano, and that's fine. This wheel has three wheels, essentially, three bits, two of which have got little cutouts. You can see that they've, I've sort of Stanley knife the cutouts there. Now, each of the three wheels has notes around the outside. C, round to D sharp, here. Then the next wheel goes from D sharp to G sharp, and then the final one, the inner one, goes from G to B. Now, this is a mock-up. I've made this and I've found that it works. So I'm gonna make a slightly nicer to look at version. So if I find A, C, and F, those three notes. Now, uh, A, well there's an A there, C, oh, well I've got it there already. There we go. C, F, and A, and I line the outer lines up, and then that reveals F in that window there, which gives you an F chord, an F major. If it's just the letter, it defaults as a major chord. Now, if I want to change this chord into a minor chord, that A has turned into an A flat. And then turning this wheel with respect to the two other ones reveals an F minor chord. Now I've sort of made the minors blue and the majors red. Now all 24 chords, all 24 major and minor chords can be obtained with this wheel. So it is a useful bit of kit for those people who are kind of think, well, I don't know what that chord is, what's this chord, or trying to maybe translate guitar to violin, or uh, guitar to piano, or piano to guitar, or whatever. All musical instruments work in the same way, so if you can communicate on the piano, you can make a, a clarinetist understand what you're talking about. So, for example, I don't know, let's, um, I don't, let's take this chord. Now, where there are more black notes involved, that's what worries a lot of people. So I've got an F sharp, an A, and a C sharp. Now this is also enharmonic proof. That is to say, somebody said, oh, it's a G flat, an A, and a C sharp. Now technically that's not correct. If you've got sharps or flats in your chord, they will be either one or the other. So this, for example, is F sharp minor, which is F sharp, A, and C sharp or G flat minor, it's a bit more manky. That's G flat, B double flat, and D flat. So those double flats can create an issue. So F sharp minor is the correct version. Now, if I use this wheel, I had F sharp A and C sharp. Well, there's my C sharp on the outside, my F sharp there, and then the A there, and that reveals my F sharp minor. You can see that in blue there. So, it also allows the user to find it if they think, oh, it's C-sharp, A, and G-flat. It'll still give the same answer, the correct answer. Now, on here, there isn't any way of telling the user, no, you've got to use all sharps or all flats. But that's something that I will include with a little instruction manual, perhaps. So you can get 
any cord type using this wheel and you just slide one wheel with respect to the other two or two with respect to one or whatever. Now, what this doesn't tell you is how to play a chord in terms of the order of notes. Really, that's up to you. But one thing that this does do is it then spurs on that, well, if I've got F sharp minor, well, how was it written here? It was written C sharp, F sharp, A. Well, that sounds nice. I prefer that one to that one, to this one. So it gets you working with your inversions as well, and then it tells you, essentially by using this, you get used to saying, oh, yeah, F sharp minor has an F sharp, an A, and a C sharp in it. So I could stick those any way around. I could have the A at the bottom, I have the C sharp, and you know the F sharp in the middle. You know, that's F sharp minor as well. three different notes in that chord, even if you're playing more than one of them. If you've got five notes, for example, four in the right hand, one in the left hand, you've only got three different ones. That F sharp. And those other F sharps, you can think of those as the same, really. It's just one slightly brighter version than uh, this one. It's a brighter version than that one, a, a sort of a, a treblier version, perhaps. But for this, for the purposes of this and music theory, generally speaking, they are the same. So there it is. There's my wheel that allows you to find any the name of any chord from three notes that you're playing on the piano.